respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Muslims living with non-Muslims and coexisting in the same community is something that is old and was practiced since the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ever since the establishment of the Muslim state in al Madinah al munawwara and Muslims coexisted with the people of the book. And this coexistence did not result in any disturbance that ruined the life of the community. And since Islam, or one of the most distinct features of Islamic manners, is that Islam enjoins giving each their right, Allah the Almighty legislated certain rights to non-Muslims and enjoined upon Muslims to fulfill and not to violate these rights. Islam gave rights to two types. Al-Mu'ahad people with whom we have peace treaties, and al-mustamin, a person who's, who feels secured as a result of a contract between him and the Muslims. In contemporary terms, visa. A visa contract is one such contract that gives or entitles the non-Muslim to these rights. One of these rights is not to be transgressed against or wronged. In the books of Al-Imam Al-Bayhaqi and Abu Dawood, and it is classified as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He who wrongs a mu'ahad or diminishes any of his rights, or overburdens him with something that he cannot bear, or take any of his property without his consent, then I, meaning the Prophet ﷺ, I will be his opponent on the Day of Judgment. Another right is that he has the right to live, and therefore is not permitted to be killed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ قَتَلَ مُعَاهَدًا فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُرَاحُ رَائِحَةَ الْجَنَّةِ He who kills a mu'ahad will not smell the scent of Jannah. And this is in the book of Al-Bukhari. They have the right to be protected from external attacks and transgression. Ibn Hazm, Al-Andalusi, May Allah have mercy on him, said that if we have people who are a mu'ahad under our protection, and then an external force comes to attack them, then we are Islamically obliged to go out and fight in their protection since they are under a treaty or a contract that they will be protected in our land. Being benevolent to them and helping them is another right. Allah Azza wa Jal says, لا أنهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروه. Allah does not prevent you from being benevolent towards those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, commenting on this verse, on the term being benevolent to them. He said that the companions used to feel uneasy giving charity to their non-Muslim 
relatives. So they asked about the permissibility of this, and this came to give them the permission. And the famous story we mentioned in the rights of parents of Asma radiallahu anha, which is reported in Al Bukhari. When her mom, who is a non believer at the time, came to visit her, asking her for help. So she went and asked the Prophet, وسلم, should she be benevolent, should she be dutiful, kind, and give her? And he said, yes, do. Another right of non Muslims upon Muslims is that they need to be kind to them. Allah says, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا And they give food, they offer food, despite their love for it or to it. They are in need, yet they give it to three types Allah mentioned in this verse. A needy, an orphan, and a captive. Qatada, in his tafsir, said, These captives whom we are instructed to be kind towards, at that time these were non-Muslims. These were polytheists. And yet the instruction came to be kind, being fair, being just. The Muslim community, Islam establishes it on very strong, solid foundations. One of its main pillars is justice amongst the community, irrespective of their faith. We are not allowed to be unfair and unjust on grounds of the difference of faith. So Allah Azza wa Jal enjoined justice generally. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl. Allah enjoins justice. And so that people do not mistakenly think that this is only addressing Muslims amongst themselves. A specific verse came to say that it is also including non-Muslims. Allah says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا let not your hatred of a people prevent you from being fair. Be fair. Al Imam al Baydawi, Rahmatullahi alayhi, said this verse means let not your extreme hatred to non Muslims lead you to stop being fair and thus commit what is prohibited. Such as killing those who are not supposed to be killed. Like women, elderly, children, people in their uh, churches or synagogues and, and so on and so forth. Or leads you to breaking a treaty. We're not betrayers in Islam. Justice is... One very important right these people deserve. Kindness to them as neighbors. We gave many details in the rights of neighbors. But one of the examples is the kindness of Muhammad وسلم, to his Jewish neighbor whom he used to visit. And especially when he visited him uh, in his illness that led to his death. And he offered Islam to him and he accepted. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. not forcing them to leave their faith is something that is evident from the time of the Prophet ﷺ. See, the Prophet ﷺ in Medina had Jews and Christians. 
And he did not compel them to accept Islam. He allowed them to remain on their faith. See, the duty of a Muslim is to preach, to call people based on evidence, debate with kind words, and then this is why Allah Azza wa says, "La ikraha fi din." There shall be no compulsion in acceptance of faith, because the uh, evidences of the faith of Islam being the true faith of Allah Azza wa Jal are strong enough. But then whoever rejects and refuses, then he is left and Allah Azza wa Jal will deal with him. Because الرشد من الغي. The right course has become clear from the wrong course. We are not allowed to harm their churches and synagogues. We are not allowed to, to demolish them, to harm them in any way. History proves this. The famous treaty of Umar with the people of Jerusalem, which had many bright terms, but some of which were that he guarantees protection for their lives, their wealth, their wealth, and their churches. Not to be demolished, not to be attacked, not to be harmed in any way, and the territory of the church not to be diminished. No one is allowed to take from it. And they will not be forced to leave their faith. Reality proves that Islam did not compel people to leave their faith, you can just look in the Muslim countries all over the world and you will see ancient churches and synagogues that still exist up until today. Islam instructs and encourages a Muslim individual to be positive and constructive in the community he lives in. To call people, and this is one of their main rights, to call them to Islam. And to respect their rights and fulfill their rights. But what if a non-Muslim violates? Well, then this is left to the people of authority. It's not up to individuals to take in their hands the power of law. It's not up to individuals to enforce that. We need to know these rights lest we transgress under the pretext of them being non-Muslims and therefore have no rights. This is a misconception and a misinformation. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to fulfill all rights He enjoined upon us and to protect us from violating any right that is due to others. Allahumma allimna ma jahilna. Allahumma allimna ma jahilna. اللهم علمنا ما جهلنا